Shalom. This is Sirach 10 and 8. Because of unrighteous dealings and injuries and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. Call Halal Yahweh Bashan Al Shai by Hashem Rakak Badash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders. Salutations to all my fellow laborers that do this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the hopefully let, the confusion of face, and the few aquaf that are listening and learning. To you I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of GMS here in Chicago. And this uh, video is called, What Do All These Regime Changes Have to Do? Or Salakia. What Do All These Regime Change Wars Have in Common? By Kim Iverson. Uh, I discovered her channel a couple days back and I've been watching. She's got a lot of really good information and really good videos. It just popped up in my feed, you know, because of the content that you watch, you know. Um... That's one one good thing about YouTube. It tries to uh, the the algorithm in the machine. It, it you know it, it puts up something along the same category. So this is how I discovered uh, this woman who, uh, if I'm not mistaken, even though her last name is Iverson, I think she may be of Moabite descent. All right, there's definitely some uh, <clears throat> some bloodline mixtures which has confused her face because I'm not sure if she's an Edomite or if she's Moab. Um, but she claims more by or, or Asian descent. So, but nevertheless, let's let her information roll out, and I'm going to uh, bring out some scriptures, and then I'm just gonna let her finish out because she's just basically gonna tell on Esau. So I came across this article, and I want to share it with you because it really does highlight exactly. It really connects the dots for all of the regime change wars that we've experienced since 2000. And I mean, once you might I add the regime changed wars since America's conception, all the wars of the 20th century were basically false wars that were all built and based upon lies. <laughs> it everything is as clear as day. I mean, it's absolutely clear what is going on. And it all comes down to the petrol dollar. And we will get into the, the petrol dollar and why it's so important and uh, what would happen if it fully collapsed. I do want to get into that at a later time. Today, I don't want to. But I do want to start connecting some of these regime change war dots. And what's alarming is that when you look at all of the countries that have uh, that we've that we've made our enemy in some way or we have gone in and overthrown in another way, they all have one really big thing in common. And that is that they decided that they were going to ditch using the American dollar to buy oil. This is James 5 and 2. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eating. Your gold and silver is cankered and the rust of them shall be a witness against you. And shall eat your flesh as it were fire. You have heaped treasure together for the last days. So, um, this great article from Market Slant, and I'm putting the link down below for you to read for yourself. But let's just go over some of the things that they have that they have uh, laid out for us here. So they talk about, you know, back in the day, the U.S. was backed; the dollar was backed by gold an actual pile of gold that was stored in Fort Knox. And during uh, Nixon's presidency, he decided to get rid of that and say, okay, we're not going to back the U.S. dollar anymore using actual physical uh, gold. We're going to move to a different system. Which explains the scripture. This is why it's cankered. Because no one wants to use it anymore because it's not to the benefit of the other nation. It actually hurts the other nations to use the... the, the uh, the currency, which is not backed by anything that comes here out of America. And that system was that it's now the dollar is basically propped up by, I would call it the oil market. So it's not backed by oil per se. It's not like every dollar is backed by a certain amount of oil. It's not that. It's the oil market 
that is propping up the dollar. So what happened was we actually struck a deal, and this is important to know, we struck a deal with Saudi Arabia that we would provide for them weapons and we would provide for them security, military security, in exchange for them to buy and sell, make sure that the buying and selling of oil was done in American dollars. And see, the problem with that is it created an uh, an imbalance in currency and it created an imbalance in fairness and deal trades. This is Proverbs 20 and 23. Divers' weights are an abomination unto Yahweh, and a false balance is not good. And this is why these nations are now turning against America. Doing this made the dollar extremely strong, and it made the dollar in high demand. Everybody in the world who didn't have an oil reserve of their own would be required, which is uh, the, the vast majority of the world, would be required to buy and sell oil using the American dollar, which means that these nations needed to get their hands on the American dollar. That made the dollar high demand. It made the dollar very, very valuable. Like I said, that's a whole different story that we're going to get into later of what happens if the dollar is devalued. I'm sure you can imagine, but that is a different topic for another day that I don't want to explore. Right now, I just want to get into connecting these regime change war dots. So in essence, the deal was the U.S. would agree to military sales and defense of Saudi Arabia, it says here, in return for all oil trade being dominated, being a done in in U.S. dollars. So, the relationship between oil and currency gives the dollar its value, and that is the essential thing to know. One by one, certain nations started to say, we don't like this deal, and we don't want to have to acquire American dollars, which cost maybe a lot out of our currency because they have to do an exchange, and maybe the exchange rate is really ridiculous for a particular nation, and it's causing them to spend a lot more on the oil than they normally would because they first have to take their currency, turn it into U.S. dollars, and then they can buy oil, and that, that can be very, very expensive for a nation. Well, a nation, as she was saying, and that's that imbalance, and this has caused the nations to rise up against. This is uh, Isaiah 14 and 10. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? All right, and then you got the stronger nations that were that was that were sitting dormant, that wasn't really going against America. Now all those weaker nations are joining to those stronger nations, nations like China and Russia, Iran. Now you got all these uh, allies of America and people who did business with America flocking to those nations. This is Ezekiel 32 and 21. The strong among the mighty shall speak to him out of the midst of hell with them that help him and they are gone down. They lie uncircumcised, slain by the sword. All right, so the strong, the mighty among them are now speaking. And, and, and those who were once weak that are now strong are joining unto those new mighty nations. And those mighty nations are against Esau Edom here in America. Nation. So especially if they're like, why can't I just buy the oil using my own currency? Why can't I buy oil using uh, gold, you know, gold back currency or whatever? So one by one, certain nations started to say, we don't really like this and we're going to come up with a different solution. Now, some of these nations came up with the solution of using the Chinese yen. Some of them came up with the solution of creating their own, their own currency that would be backed by actual gold again in order to buy and sell oil. Some of them, that was pretty much the two options there. I mean, I think some maybe have said that they would, they would try to use the euro and that would be maybe something that they could possibly do. Now, the nations, this is where we connect the taunts. The nations that said, this is the plan. This is what we're going to do. These nations are, Iraq was the first. Then there was Iran and Libya and Venezuela and China and Russia. All the hot spots. And those are the nations. Now, Syria comes into play. But that's a little bit of a different, uh, I want to get into that one here in a second. But let's just think about this. The nations that... Syria 
is basically become the battleground, first of all, because it's prophecy. Second of all, is because both Americans and, and the Israelis want to control the oil that goes through Europe. And Russia has a corner on that market. And putting a pipeline through Syria is the goal of the Israelis and America. And Russia is not having it. They already have a deal with Syria and they and they're trying to keep control over their market. And that's what this come down this all comes down to. The same thing with Syria. I mean with uh Venezuela. The 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 mighty, the strong nations are in battle over who's gonna control Venezuela and Syria, which is gonna is which is speeding up this whole world's conflict. Sad. We no longer want to use the U.S. dollar to buy and sell oil. China, Russia, Libya, Iraq, Iran, Venezuela. So it's pretty clear what's happening when you see this list. I mean, it's it just smacks you in the face what's happening here. There are no other countries that I know of. Maybe there are some more and you can comment down below or send me an email. Go to my website, kimiverson.com and tell me about, I could be wrong, tell me some other nations that maybe decide that they were going to drop using the U.S. dollar to buy and sell oil. But this is a pretty alarming list, especially when you think about the nations that we're considering to be our enemy or nations that we want to topple. We did topple Iraq and Libya. Look what we did to them. Iraq in 2000, said that they were no longer going to be using the U.S. dollar. And look what happened to them. That was in 2000. 2000, Iraq says, we're not going to use the U.S. dollar. After 9-11, the country that we decide to march into is Iraq because we said that they had weapons of mass destruction. Why were we not going after Saudi Arabia when 9-11 was largely done by Saudis? What happened? That made no sense whatsoever. That would be like attacking England for something that the, that the Irish did. It made no sense. This is Micah 2 and 1. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. With the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. They covet fields and take them by violence. Houses and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage, and they oppressed the hell out of the um, the Iraqis. Millions of Iraqis died in a war that was all based upon falsehoods and lies. So did Libyans. And um, what was the other one she mentioned? Now, now I'm forgetting it. But all the, the uh, it was the Libyans, the Iraqis. Yeah, the Libyan and, and Libya and, and Iraq. Those those two. Those two countries have been totally toppled, and now they're they're in Syria, and they're and they're doing the same thing to Venezuela, as as this video rolls. And there, so we go into Iraq. We say they've got weapons of mass destruction, and coincidentally, it was shortly after Iraq saying that they were going to drop the U.S. dollar to buy and sell oil. That's coincidental. Why weren't we marching into Saudi Arabia, considering? They were the ones who funneled the terrorists into our country to attack us. What's, what's that about? And now we're claiming human rights abuses, human rights abuses in Syria and Venezuela. And that's why we've got to go after Venezuela and Syria. And meanwhile, Saudi Arabia took a man and used a bone saw to hack him into pieces. And yet that's not a human rights violation. Because I don't remember a story of Maduro doing that, do you? I don't have any stories of that. When I look up what human rights abuses Maduro has committed, I can't find anything. I really can't, and I've looked. What Esau is a damn hypocrite and a liar, and they're exposed. All right? They're a liar, and they're damn, and they're just exposed. They are the wicked. Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked thereof. Uh, uh, Salaki, let me just read this instead of trying to quote it. But they definitely covered the faces of the judges thereof. Job 9 and 24. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof, 
If not, where and who is he? Esau, Edom is the wicked that the Bible speaks of. Call Halal Yahweh Hashem Abishai, Bahashem Wa Aba Babal.